keep related words together. The position of the words in a sentence is the principal means of showing their relationship. The writer must therefore, so far as possible, bring together the words and group of groups of words that are related in thought and keep apart those which are not so related. The subject of a sentence and the principal verb should not, as a rule, be separated by a phrase or clause that can be transferred to the beginning. All right, so this, this, uh, this, these sentences are best shown um, with examples. So these are the, the bad sentences, and the right, the ones on the right are the good ones. All right, so Wordsworth in the fifth book of the Excursion gives a minute description of this church. In the fifth book of the excursion, Wordsworth gives a minute description of this church. Um, it's true. I mean, that just sounds bad. It's a little bit too like colloquial. Like you're you're trying a little bit too hard to be kind of creative, and so he's telling you not to do that. Like don't don't try to get too cute. Wordsworth in the fifth book of the excursion gives a minute description of this church. Like it might it might. Um, be it might seem like it's okay but it's really not because it's it's again it's raising the question mark for the reader you want to make sure the reader can just flow right through your essay and just like slice through it like butter um as he or she is reading it in the fifth book book of the excursion wordsworth gives a minute description of this church cast iron when treated in a best smirk converter is changed into steel again getting kind of cute you know seems a little bit fancy but it's not it's actually more confusing um just be straightforward about it by treatment in a bessemer converter cast iron is changed into steel you know very easy very obvious you can if the reader can paint that picture clearly and quickly and succinctly um that's a better sentence than if the reader is somewhat confused um the objection is that the interposed phrase or clause needlessly interrupts the natural order of the main clause. Exactly. It needlessly interrupts it. And it's the natural order. Um, usually, however, this objection does not hold when the order is interrupted only by a relative clause or by an expression in opposition. Nor does it hold in periodic sentences in which the interruption is used as a means of creating suspense. The relative pronoun should come as a rule immediately after its antecedent. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Um, so antecedent. Antes in Spanish means before, so antecedent means it comes before. Um, there is a look in his eye that boded mischief. This is actually better. In his eye was a look that boded mischief. Instead of there was, there was, there was seems a little bit more path like a passive construction. Um, he wrote three articles about his adventures in Spain, Spain or Russian, Harper's Magazine. This is much better. It's he published in Harper's Magazine three articles about his adventures in Spain. He published. He published. This is a portrait of Benjamin Harrison. Da, da, da. Grandson of William Henry Harrison. Period. He became president in 1889. Exactly. Because who became president in 1889? Did William Henry Harrison become president in 1889? Or did Benjamin Harrison, the one in the photo, become president in 1889? We don't know. It's a little bit vague in that, the left one. That, that's why the right one is much clearer. Much clearer. So break it up. Make it two sentences. This is a portrait of Benjamin Harrison, grandson of William Henry Harrison. He became president in 1889. Clearly, we're talking about Benjamin Harrison, the one in the photo. Um, so it's all about the clarity to the reader that's really what the thesis is of a lot of all of these rules essentially all these elements of style uh at the end of the scene consists of group of group of words the relative comes to the end of the group unless this would cause ambiguity or lack of clarity the superintendent of the chicago division who blank yeah the proposal to amend the sherman act which has been variously judged okay here we go this is better the proposal which has been variously judged to amend the sherman act Proposal to amend the much-debated Sherman Act. William Henry Harrison's grandson, who blank, as opposed to the who blank. The Duke of York, his brother, who was regarded with hostility by the Whigs. Modifiers should come if possible next to the word they modify. I totally agree with this. It's all about the clarity. 
All the members were not present. Eh, unclear. Not all the members were present. Yes, not at all. Not at all. Not all. Not at all. He only found two mistakes. He found only two mistakes. Only two. Not all. Only two. Right? So it's small. But again, all of these all of these elements of style um, in writing improve writing dramatically. And uh, again, it's all about practice. So, you know, practice writing emails, letters. Uh, practice writing in a journal, a diary. Practice, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, and then also read a lot, you know, like, uh, you know, even, even periodicals like Time for Kids or, or, um, or Newsweek, um, for older folks, um, that aren't, aren't kids. I think those are really good magazines. U.S. News World Report, um, you know, Financial Times, if you really want to get, get, uh, a little bit more British, um, but yeah, I mean, or a little bit more, um, substantive with which with regards to uh, vocabulary um about politics and and um you know and whatnot um but yeah i mean there are a lot of really good really good periodicals um and then obviously you know just reading good good essays reading good um i'm a big fan of, of funny writing uh david sedaris um is hilarious um you know but there's there are some really you know, so there are some really talented writers out there. Uh, Stephen King's also a great writer. I, mean, I know a lot of folks might not like horror books, but he actually wrote a book. I believe he has daughters, and I believe that I read that they were bummed out because he couldn't read any of his books. So he wrote a book for them when they were little girls or probably a little older now. But uh, it was called The Eyes of the Dragon, and that's a really good book. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, so, but yeah, there were a lot of really great, you know, things to read, um, you know, that, that will definitely help with regards to, uh, to, uh, expression and writing. So, okay. Last sentence here, bad sentence. Mary Major will give a lecture on Tuesday evening in Delhi Hall, which the public is invited. This is cleaner. On Tuesday evening at 8 p.m., Major R.E. Joyce will give in Bailey Hall a lecture. My experiences in Mesopotamia, the public is invited. It's true, and it, it feels heavy. It feels like it's like you also can sort of feel it like break under the weight of one sentence. You know, if you try to, if you write multiple times, you know, in the margin, or you type it in Microsoft Word, etc., and it just it doesn't fit in one sentence. Break it up into two. You know, you that that's really where varying your your sentence length and your your, your structure comes into play. It's just, if, if the sentence sounds better as two, if, if the ideas come out better to the reader um, uh, when dispersed in two sentences as opposed to one sentence, then then write two sentences. Um, so yeah, Tuesday evening at 8 p.m., Major R.E. Joyce will give in Bailey Hall a lecture on my experiences in Mesopotamia, period. The public is invited, period. All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much.